Hello everybody and welcome back to Creation Myths. I have some bad creationist genetics for you today from a frequent guest of this series, Dr. Rob Carter from Creation Ministries International. Now, Dr. Carter uh, put up a video on his YouTube channel, Biblical Genetics, on August 16th, 2022, and I want to talk a little bit about that video. I'm not actually going to go minute by minute through this. It's it's about the dating of mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam. He makes a bunch of pretty basic errors in like evolution and population genetics, but it's nothing new. It's the kind of thing you could read or hear from anyone from Dr. Carter or Dr. Nathaniel Jensen or any one of a number of creationists coming out of the major young earth ministries. Uh, I've covered a lot of this before, so I'm not going to repeat everything I've said about this in the past, things like the ins and outs of mutation rates versus substitution rates or somatic versus germline mutations. What I want to talk about here is what Dr. Carter doesn't say in this video, and what he doesn't talk about at all are the data that allow us to directly test the young earth hypothesis when it comes to the dating of mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam, the mitochondrial and Y chromosome most recent common ancestors. To review a little bit, the young earth position when it comes to these common ancestors is that we can calculate when the most recent common ancestors for these parts of the human genome existed by extrapolating single generation mutation rates back in time indefinitely. Creationists use what are called pedigree mutation rates. You look at a parent, and the offspring, and you see how many mutations occur in that single generation. You then take that rate and extrapolate it backwards. In this video, Dr. Carter says when you do that, you get a date that is about two orders of magnitude earlier than the consensus among biologists, so thousands of years ago rather than hundreds of thousands of years ago. Well, that earlier date is a testable hypothesis, and conveniently, we have the data to test it. Right now, we're going to look at one specific case in a bit of detail, and then I'll mention a few other cases that work exactly the same way and accomplish exactly the same thing, but we're not going to go through the nuts and bolts of each of them. I'm only going to go into the details of this one case, and then I'll just kind of mention the rest and describe those findings in more general terms. We're going to be talking about the island of Tristan de Cunha in the Atlantic Ocean. This is one of the most remote inhabited places on Earth. It was discovered uninhabited by Portuguese explorers in 1506, and it was finally permanently settled in 1816. Now, we're going to be looking at Y chromosome mutation rates and common ancestry. Dr. Nathaniel Jensen from Answers in Genesis claims three Y chromosome mutations per generation in humans, and he then takes this single generation pedigree-based mutation rate and extrapolates it backwards to arrive at his date for the Y chromosome most recent common ancestor. So he's just generation after generation, three mutations, three mutations, three mutations, three mutations, all the way back in time. Now, conveniently, Y chromosome diversity on Tristan de Cunha has been documented. This has actually been studied. Since the island was settled about 200 years ago, and we can assume a 20 to 40 year generation time, we have between 5 and 10 generations on Tristan de Cunha from the seven original male inhabitants who still have descendants on the island. So we can calculate how many Y chromosome mutations we should find in the descendants if Dr. Carter and Gene Sin and all the other yaks who use this talking point are correct that the single generation mutation rate applies backwards in time no matter how far you go. So let's do some basic math here. We have seven lineages and, according to Jensen, three mutations per generation. That works out to, across the entire population, 21 mutations per generation. If we assume a long generation time of 40 years, which I think is un unnecessarily long, but let's assume it, that means we take 21 mutations per generation, multiply it by five generations because we have about 200 years, and that gets us a minimum of 105 mutations that we should see on this island according to the Young Earth model. If we take a faster generation time, maybe a little too fast, then we could say, okay, it's 20 year generation time, 200 years, that gets us 10 generations at 21 mutations per generation. Again, total for this population on the island. We expect to see 210 mutations as our maximum. So for everybody on this island, we expect to see 105 to 210 mutations in the Y chromosome 
if the Young Earth timeline is correct. And going by what Dr. Carter said, that the evolutionary rate is about two orders of magnitude slower, we expect one to two mutations according to the evolutionary hypothesis. Well, what do we find? One mutation in all the Y chromosome lineages on the island. One. This is a direct refutation of the YEC claims regarding mutation rates, mutation accumulation, and calculating the time to the mitochondrial and Y chromosome common ancestors. Now, if this was a one-off, creationists could ignore it, say it's a fluke, something wonky, whatever. But it's not. The same work has been done for the mitochondrial lineages on Tristan de Cunha. I'm not going to go through the details like I just did. We're not going to do any more math, but you can see the abstract and see that in all of the mitochondrial DNA that's been surveyed, going back to those original inhabitants 200 years ago, zero mitochondrial mutations. And of course, as I've talked about elsewhere, we've done this exact same work for other locations, like the Canary Islands and Vanuatu, and extended families with known divergence dates, all of which are consistent with the evolutionary timeline and refute the creationist timeline. So the takeaway I want you to get from this is that the nuts and bolts of how creationists claim to get their young Earth mitochondrial and Y chromosome timelines, it doesn't really matter. We could go through this Rob Carter video minute by minute, and I could refute it point by point, as I've done in the past with this stuff. But it just doesn't matter that much. We have directly measured mutation accumulation rates that directly refute the young Earth claims. We don't have one case that does that or two cases. We have many cases using different methodologies and different parts of the genome that do that. If creationists want their recent common ancestors to work, they need to explain these data instead of ignoring them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit like, leave a comment, share, and remember, don't get fooled.